let's gather around in a circle around this offering plate. I want each of you will hold a special something. Okay. Let's see. Can you hold this? Can you hold this? Okay, do you each have something to share? You didn't get one? There you go, Tegan. Okay, now does everybody have something to share? All right, Macy, what do you have? You have a $20 bill, yes. So, God did make each of you something special, and we're glad that he made you you. And so, the, you each have something to offer to this plate. So, Macy, put in the $20 bill. When you get birthday money, instead of just using it, or on Christmas, instead of just using that money for yourself, maybe you could use that money to get a present for someone else that you care about, or to share with someone who doesn't have money, or you could give some of it in an offering to church because it's God who gives you everything that you have. What do you have, Tegan? You have a yes, you have a granola candy bar. You can put that in the offering plate. Maybe if you have an extra snack or an extra dessert at lunch or you, your brother or sister have, are still hungry but you're full, maybe you can share the food that you have to give them full tummies too. What do you have, B? Uh, I don't know. Oh, that's, that's something very tricky. It's a mouth guard. A mouth guard for sports, so maybe you're really good at running fast or you're really strong. Um, and so you can, uh, maybe like when other you're playing sports at school, you can make sure other kids are included and get to be on your team. Or if you're playing games at Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts, you can make sure everybody gets to be included. What do you have, Matthew? A calculator. Let's say that you're really good at doing math, or maybe you're really good at reading, then you can help other kids if they're struggling in math or reading. You can help them to be good at it. Okay. Right. Great question, Shade. What if you're not allowed to share answers? That is a good point, and you shouldn't just tell people the answers. I'm so glad you asked that question. But you could help them know, you could help them figure out how to do the math problem or how to sound out the word instead of just giving them the answers. Great question. Webb, what do you have? A toy train. A toy train, yes. You can share the toys that you have with other kids so that they get to have fun too. Webb, you've done that with a lot of kids here at this church. I know, you gave uh, your extra toys that you weren't playing with anymore, and that made them very happy. Thank you. You can put that there. Webb gave us some toys for the nursery. Thank you. Shade, what do you have? A red and orange painting. Let's say you love to paint or to draw or to color. Maybe you can make a picture for someone who you love so that they know that you love them and you can use that picture to tell them that God loves them, especially if they're feeling sad. Go ahead. All right, Katie, what do you have? Yes, our, our, we're gonna do Lucy's last. <laughs> Go ahead, Kate. You have a necklace. Let's say you love making necklaces or bracelets. You can make those for other people so that they feel special, especially if they're having a bad day. Put it in the offering plate. Thank you. What do you have, Alana? You have Pokemon cards. Yes. Let's say you could teach other people how to use them so that they get the joy of playing Pokemon and so that they feel included. You can put that in the offering plate. I have a watch, which represents time. And a way that you can also give what you have is you can listen to other kids or adults when they're sad or when they're scared. You can spend time with a brother, a sister, a cousin, a neighbor, so that they feel happy and you get to play with them. And when you do that, you take good care of them. And Lucy, what do you have? You have a coat. Let's say that you grew out of your old coat or you have two coats. Maybe you could give one of your coats um, to Matthew 25 Ministries. Uh, we have a clothing bin in the back and you could give your extra clothes so that other kids can be warm. You can put it on the top. And this bag represents you and all that you are and all the good things that you have and that you have to offer. Let's try that again. You're right, Webb, it's not gonna work. 
It keeps spilling over. And that, my friends, is what happens at church. When you all give what you have to offer, when we all give what we have to offer, then maybe some of us who can't read, but others can read to us. Or some of us aren't good at math, but others are and can figure out things that together we have all that we need. And everybody has clothes and everybody has food and everyone has each other and knows that they're loved and valued. That is why God calls you to use the special things that you're good at and that you love doing to help other people. All right, let's sit down for a prayer. Okay, so my dear friends, you are the youngest people at this church. And sometimes it might feel like you're not that important or you're not that special, But we tell you, and God tells you today, that you are, you are very special. You are very important to God and to all of us here at this church. God made you, you, just like you sang in the song, and God made you all that you are and all the gifts that you have. Thank you for being here at this church and sharing what you have to bless all of us. God says to you today that you are very special and more than enough. Let's pray. Dear God, God, thank you for all of our children and youth and adults. Thank you for all of our children and youth and adults. For giving us to each other to know and to love. And for giving us each things we're good at. Help us to use what you give us so that others can know you. you. Amen. Amen. Good job. Thank you. You may go to activity time now. So, many people put large sums into the treasury at the temple, but she put in two small copper coins worth less than a penny. What this widow has to offer is very minuscule compared to everyone else. It's of little value in the ancient world. But the point of the story is not just how poor she is. The point of the story is that she gives everything to God. That's all she has to live on, those two little coins. And so by handing them over in the offering, she entrusts her whole life and her future to God. She puts it all in his hands. And in front of all the disciples, Jesus commends her. He points to her and says, she has given more than everyone. Jesus recognizes her and lifts her up. Well, Jesus means to uplift her, and he also means to uplift us by this story. But because we are people, and human, I'm human people, that <laughs> this story doesn't always affect us that way. Sometimes it makes us feel judged. We look at the widow and we think, wow, I'm not like her at all. I can't trust God like that. I can't give everything I have because this person depends on me and I have this bill to play and I don't have any time to do anything else but what I'm doing right now. And so, The story can make us feel less than. We compare ourselves to the widow or to each other and feel that our time or our talents or the money that we can give are so small in comparison to others that we might as well not even bother. We might not even, we might as well not even give at all. And the pain runs even deeper than that. That the widow draws out in us the pain that Maybe what we have to offer isn't enough. Maybe we aren't enough. Maybe we aren't enough as a friend, a spouse, a son or daughter, a parent, a neighbor. Maybe we aren't enough as a Christian. And so we are left feeling without. We are left feeling that all we ever do is disappoint those we care about and God. But Jesus says, You see that widow? She gave less than everyone. And yet, she gave more than them all because she trusted my father. 
She was dismissed by everyone around her. And yet, Jesus noticed her. You may be dismissed by everyone important to you, by your family, and even because we are all sinful, you may even be dismissed time or two or many times over by your sisters and brothers here at this church. But not so with Jesus Christ. He looks at you and notices you. God gives us the story of the widow today to lift us all up, to set us free from all the voices without and within which tell us that we are not enough and so we might as well not even bother. God tells us three things. One, you do have something to offer. God made you. God decided it was uh, worth making you. God decided that you are worthy of love. God decided that you are worthy to be entrusted with things and with other people. God decided you are worthy of his love. So it's time you start believing that too. Whether you are young or perhaps a new Christian or newer to this congregation, you don't have to wait till some future time when you'll be wiser or more respected. You have something to offer already right now. Or maybe you're older, perhaps even elderly, and you've been a Christian your whole life or a long time or a member of this or another church a long time. You still have something to offer. Each of your voices count. Each of you have perspectives that matter. God saw to it to bring you here knowing that we would all need you just as you are. So you do have something to offer. The second thing is it's enough. Since the Holy Spirit has given you your gifts, God knew what all those around you in your family or your workplace or here in this church would need and how to meet needs through you. There are some in this world who will only come to believe in Jesus Christ because they know you, because you are you and have the experiences and the perspective that you have, and that will connect with them. So first, you have something to offer. Second, it is enough because the Holy Spirit has given it to you. And third, give it and trust God with your money, with the talent that you have, with your time. Your gifts are, (laughs) thank you, Dennis. Your gifts are where your talents, what you love doing, what gives you, what's life-giving for you and enjoyable and what you're good at, where that meet the needs of others. Give it and watch what God can do with your two little coins, how God can inspire others in faith and bring a whole generation around you to believe. So today, God quiets all those voices, those voices without and within which tell you that you don't have enough to offer and you might, not, you might as well not try and that you aren't enough. Jesus quiets them all. He gestures to you publicly in front of all of us through the word and says to you today, you are more than enough.